On the next episode of Painting and Travel, Roger and Sarah visit the agricultural community of Hastings, Florida. Sarah talks with a farmer as he harvests his crop, while Roger uses acrylics to paint in the field. markets are nice places to shop and the one that's near our home that I like to go to is open on Saturdays. In St. John's County in the southern part there's Hastings and Elkton and Spuds and a number of small towns that are well known for growing crops such as potatoes, corn, cabbages, root vegetables like beets, onions, rutabagas, turnips, and there are all sorts of wonderful things you can do with these vegetables. And later on, I think we'll try to take a trip over to Hastings or Elkton or one of the towns that grows a lot of vegetables. And we'll see if we can find a place that Roger wants to paint at. Oh gosh, sweet potatoes or regular potatoes? That's a tough decision. Um, <laughs> I guess we'll have the... Um, the red? Sure. Okay, great. Thank you so Thanks much. Thanks again. You have a great day. Right. Well, this morning we are in Hastings in St. Augustine. It isn't very far from here, and that's where Sarah got those lovely vegetables at the farmer's market. This morning I'm going to paint this field. I don't know whether there was corn or potatoes here. It's fallow right now, but it's a, a beautiful little scene, and I love this road and this ditch here with this water. It makes some nice reflections of the sky and the water. So I'm going to paint this. I often start my paintings by toning my board with some burnt sienna just to give it a nice warm tone. And uh, I do that just by taking a small rag and my atomizer and spraying the board. And then I just basically, I just squirt out a little bit of burnt sienna right on the board. And with this rag, I just wipe it around. And these are acrylics, so they dry very quickly. And uh, I could paint that on there with a paintbrush, but this just seems a easiest and quickest way to do that. And I usually do many boards at once. And that's all I do with that. And I usually bring a number of boards with me when I come out to paint, and they're all standard sizes. I have 5 by 7, 8 by 10, 9 by 12, and 11 by 14. Those are standard sizes, and that way if we want to frame them we can purchase standard size frames. It makes it a little easier. I'm using acrylics today. This is titanium white, alizarin crimson, cadmium red, ultramarine blue, cerulean blue, Indian yellow, and cadmium yellow. Well, I'm going to start with my dark colors, the alizarin crimson, ultramarine blue, and Indian yellow. This is just going to make a, a, a dark color, just so I can sketch in the scene here. I want to keep my horizon up towards the top. And I'm going to divide my board into thirds today. This division of thirds in a painting isn't always necessary, but uh, when I do divide a painting into thirds, it generally works out better than, uh, for instance, if I put the horizon right in the middle, which I don't want to do. I want some uneven areas here. So about a third here and two thirds down here. It's just a general rule. If we got our dark trees back here, this lighting is going to change as we go on, as the sun comes out. I have a little farm back there. That's going to be nice. We have one point perspective here. We have this road kind of meandering in, and we have this ditch. And I'm standing right between the two of them. So we have the ditch here. We have a lot of, I've got a lot of foliage in here coming towards me. 
And of course, as it comes towards me, it gets larger. As it goes back, it gets smaller. I love this scene. This is just kind of my kind of landscape. Over here, we have a lot of rows of where the crop was. It's been harvested already. And we'll learn more about these crops a little later on. Now, some of these colors on my palette are transparent and some of them are opaque. The alizarin crimson, ultramarine blue, and Indian yellow, they're transparent colors. So I'm going to stay with those transparent colors to begin with. I don't want any white in this painting because I want this burnt sienna to show through for as long as it can. It gives me that warm flavor of the painting. And I'm applying this a bit thin today, at least to start with. I'll, my paints get thicker as I go along, but I always start out with some thin colors. Here we have the road, which is a bit warmer, and I'm going to make that dark, but that's going to get lighter and lighter as I go along. I just want to get this covered, that road. It just comes pretty straight towards me, but it has a little curve right here. I have to take my time and get this perspective right. Even though it's one point perspective, I don't want, I want this road to flare out enough so it looks like it's coming towards me. So I have to really think about this for just a moment. Going to mix some white and cerulean blue, and I'll drop in this sky now with my light colors. By the way, this is a masonite board covered with gesso. I think I'll put my sky color on here just as a as this light cerulean blue right now. And then in a few moments, or maybe later on in the painting, I'll add some of these cumulus clouds. Or maybe I'll just leave them out. Maybe I'll leave this as a, as a, uh, just a plain pale blue sky. The reason I say that is there's so much going on in here. I don't want too much confusion up in this area of the sky. I don't want the sky to be fighting with what is my main subject down here. So I may leave that just as it is, but uh, I always build on these paintings as I go. So I really don't know how this is going to end up when I start. It's just uh, each painting is different. It's easy to do a formula painting and have it come out pretty well, but painting like this is is different. I'm trying to learn something every time I come out here. I'm not just trying to replicate something I did in the past. Well, that's my dark tones I have on there. That's what I wanted to get down. I get, of course, a few of my light tones in here. Now, it's kind of damp out here this morning, so this isn't drying quite as fast as I thought it might. I think I'll start right over here and put some of this field in here where we have those nice parallel horizontal lines. These lines in the back are going to be very close together. As I get closer to the front, these lines are going to get further apart because we're dealing with some perspective here. So up here, the lines are a little further apart. As we go back, these lines get closer and closer together. At the back here, these lines are going to be totally parallel to the horizon. But as I move forward, these lines are going to drop down because I'm looking at this a little bit this way, so I have somewhat of a perspective, but the vanishing point would end up way over here to my left. So I'm just going to put these lines at a little bit of an angle this way. Right up here, we have some, some weeds right at the edge of this field. Ah, there comes the sun. Right here in the middle of the road, we have a few weeds growing. This curves slightly this way. And comes back in here. Well, now this is dry now. I think as soon as the sun hit this, it dried, dried very quickly. It only takes a minute or so. I'll make this green slightly darker and this ditch falls off very sharply here. I'm just using rough brushwork on this because I like all this texture in the painting. And the burnt sienna that I had underneath there really helps me to get a uh, start to establish a, a lot of nice texture down here. It, it saves a lot of uh, steps because having that burnt sienna on there and it's dry and it was put on there rather roughly, uh, I've got my first layer of texture. Over here I have some beautiful sort of bluish green weeds. 
Boy, really beautiful. So uh, they're almost a cerulean blue. Green is a hard color to work with. And yeah, I might take some of this same color and drop it in this side just to balance these two areas out, putting the same color in here. Now let me deal with this road. This is totally dry. I'm looking at this road and it, it looks very warm and, and then the sun goes behind the cloud and it, it, it's, it becomes cool and the sun comes out again. So it's changing all the time. That's one problem with, with working outside is, is all these constant changes. However, if I were to just work on this in the studio with a photograph, what would happen with my photograph would be that I'd take the picture, those trees back there would all go to black. They, I, I would just not be able to see the color out there in those trees that I can see with my own eyes. And in that same, if I took that picture, the same picture, the sky would get bleached out. So I don't get nearly the amount of information I can uh, in the studio by using a photograph than I can out in the field. So that's the, the real advantage to working outside. Oh, there's some beautiful cattle egrets flying over. You'll often see these cattle egrets uh, walking behind the tractors as they plow the fields. They find bugs and things out here. We'll try and get an accurate perspective here of this road once again. I think this is the thing I'm most worried about, is getting this road just the right shape. It really, since this is one point perspective, right back here, it's going to disappear into one line. As it comes forward here, it starts to spread out. Now this small bend right here in the road, it's very subtle, but as it bends towards me here, this will get wider because it's coming right at me, so it's going to be wider. Then as it curves back this way, it gets, it gets narrower. So wide here as it, as it aims directly towards me, and then it gets narrower because I'm looking at the side of it. I'm using the edge of my brush a lot today just scumbling these colors on. That way it's going to leave me with a lot of these other textures underneath. I'm just going to build these textures one on top of the other. Right now I have it the same color and the same value here as I do back here. Always in the foreground there's going to be more contrast and more color. So I'll put more white in this, more color, and I'll start to change the contrast here. So we'll get more variations of contrast in color here in the foreground than we will in the background. Now this uh, sandy path here, it bleeds over into this field. So I'll take some of that same color from the road, bring it over into this field. Down here in the ditch, it's very dark, probably the darkest part of my painting. So I'm going to take my ultramarine blue Lizard and Crimson, touch of Indian Yellow. I'm going to make this very dark right down here. This is quite warm down here in color. Even though it's dark green, I want that to be slightly warm. And this is still in shadow. The sun hasn't hit down in there yet. So on this side, it's also dark. There's a number of weeds over here in this field to my right. I'm just going to indicate a few of those. Well, these trees in the very background here are too dark. I painted them warm to begin with because I want some warm undertones there. But now I'm going to take my greens and paint over that. I think I'll use my cerulean blue, put a little bit more of that out. And I want to neutralize this green somewhat. So I'm going to put a touch of red in there because I don't want that green to compete with this bright green up here in the foreground. And I'm just sort of using the edge of my brush to dab some of these colors on there. Now way in the background here, I can't see that much difference between the values, in other words, the lightness and darkness between these colors here and the trees in the background, but they are way in the background. So I'm going to mix up a color that's cooler and, uh, and lighter and put these trees in here. That's really not the way I'm seeing it. I mix a little bit of yellow in there too, but I know in order to push these trees in the far background, that's what I need to do. And also I want this 
edge up here to be very soft. So I might spray that. That way this paint will flow up into the dry paint and make this edge right here a soft edge. As the sun comes in and out, it uh, makes nice patches of sunlight across this. So with my white, cadmium yellow, and a touch of cerulean blue, we'll strike a nice highlight back here where the sun might be hitting that field way off in the distance there. I'm going to uh, take a smaller brush and I'm going to put a few sky holes, a few negative areas right in these trees. And I love this barn way back there. It's way in the distance, way over there. And it doesn't show up much, but uh, we'll add a nice human point of interest to this painting. And it's in shadow, so I'll mix my ultramarine blue with some of my other colors here. Just want that kind of a gray color. And I'll drop that in right in here. I've got the roof on that, which is catching more light. And that roof will be right in here. I'm going to lighten the road again here with some warm colors. And I'll scumble a few more light patches of sand right there. That'll bring this, bring this forward even more. What I'm doing here on location is I'm just getting a feel for what this scene is. I'm trying to learn all these colors and study them as much as I can. And I can take the experience of being out here on this scene. I can take that back to the studio and finish it. A few more light patches in here. As I look at this drainage ditch and the water in here, the water that's closest to me here is darker. And that's because I'm looking down at it and it's reflecting the sky, which is darker up there. As I look in the distance, that angle of attack reflects the sky in the distance. It's bouncing at me from way over there to my eye. So it's going to be lighter. We have a little friend that has joined us, a little praying mantis. I used to like to collect these when I was a, a young boy. Keep them in a jar for a day or so. <laughs> the water I'm going to have down here it's going to be darker blue. Well, almost going to make it a purple color. And as I go up, it's going to get lighter and lighter. I do have some darker areas right under these trees, so I will push that a bit more, make this darker right in this shadow area. I'll make that a cool color. Well, it's getting pretty warm out here now, so I think I'm going to take this painting back into the studio and we'll finish it there. And we'll take our little friend and we'll just put him back down here on the ground. Well, here we are back in our studio here in St. Augustine. and I've put my painting up on the board. I did take a number of reference photographs, so I have those up here on my laptop computer so I can use those as a guide. Next best thing to being there. I want to make this a warm color. Right up towards the front, I think I'll make this brighter, just to have some more contrast and color right in this area here. And I'm going to make some darker patches of weeds right in the center. I'll take some of this dark color, blend it back into this area here. I have to remember everything has to work together as a whole. So I can't concentrate on one area entirely without thinking about the other areas. I think I have a, about the right value in here. So I'm going to make this warm yellowish, reddish gray color, and I'll eliminate some of the details right back here. And the reason I want to simplify that is I want the attention to come up into this area here I don't want this area back here to fight with this area here. I did like the patch of sunlight I had back there, so I'm going to keep that. These trees in the distance here seem too warm to me, so I'm going to mix up some greens and put a few more highlights of green back there. And I don't want anything back here that's so dark it's going to fight with the dark areas in the foreground. 
Now, since I lightened this area back here with this blue, it brought this forward because this color here is very close to the same color I have on these trees to the left. And as I've said many times, one color always affects another color in the painting. So this color really did affect my thinking on this color here. So I'm going to redo this area here. It's too close right now to being the same color as this. So I think a lighter blue might work for me. Just a slight amount of yellow in there to keep it green. Well, there were a lot of cumulus clouds out there the day we painted this. I think I'll add a few of those and we'll see how that works. Now the top side of those clouds are going to be warmer and lighter. The dark side of the clouds are going to be uh, grayer. I often notice that the underside of a cloud, which is a bit gray, is the same value or close to the same value as the blue sky or the sky around it. Right down here, I decided I want to make this sky warmer. So I'm mixing up some yellow with some white. Now with some white and this yellow, I may put a few highlights right on the tops of these cumulus clouds. Or it's just one or two here or there. Well, I've taken another minute or two to put a few more details on there, and here's what I did. After adding this post, I added a shadow across here. I made these trees larger in order to make this patch of sunlight appear like it's going behind these trees, which gives me another layer, another dimension to this painting. I think now we'll take another minute to look around this beautiful farmland in Hastings here in St. John's County. Then we'll take one last final look at this painting. We were driving along out here in the farm country and we stopped and picked up a piece of this corn. They're trying to get it all in before the storm blows up and gets everything wet. We watched them harvesting it and it was a lot of fun really because the cattle egret, those are all those white birds, are going crazy. They're so happy to get the leftovers and they just line up down the rows here picking up anything uh, left over that they can harvest for themselves. This is Gene Povier, and he has a farm here in Elkton area, which is not far from Hastings. Uh, what type of corn do we have here? This is field corn. Field this corn. is for feed, but you can also make ethanol out of it, whatever you want, but it's mainly for feed, you know, hogs, cows, horses, chicken. Mm -hmm. And this is dry, so this lasts a long time, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you can keep it a year or longer if you keep it moist, you know, where it don't get wet and mold. Mm -hmm. If you have bins, you know, grain bins and everything else. Yeah, you can keep it keep it longer than that. I was just gonna show you, we've yes. had so much water. Yes. This is this is what water does to you when you get too much excess. I guess that's why y'all are working so hard to get this crop right. in now with this huge right. storm blowing up. Right. What else do you grow down here? Grow potatoes, 600 acres of potatoes. We used to grow cabbage, we used to grow broccoli, we used to grow onions, we used to grow gladiolus. But now we're strictly, mainly as a, potatoes is our big crop. Do you have a favorite? No, no, they're all good to me, look at me. Okay, yeah, here's the $10 million <laughs> question. Do you eat potatoes? You better believe it. <laughs> me too. Let me tell you what we do when we wait on a truck, a lot of times we have to wait on trucks. We got our own fryer right there mm -hmm. and we slice them up. Eat them all, every day. Fresh. Every day. Oh, they're the best when they're fresh. Gosh, could you call me on my cell phone when you're Anytime doing that? Anytime from right the middle of April to the middle of June is when we harvest. We're getting into more and more corn because the market demands corn. Mm -hmm. So that's why we're doing this right now. We're trying to harvest this, you know, because I said about the storm and the weather coming. Oh yeah. Oh well, all the clouds and it's yeah. darkening over there, yeah. so I can see it's coming on quick. How do you get the strength, the energy to be a farmer? Because it's <laughs> got to be more than full time. You're born into it. So you go back a few generations? My daddy farmed, and then when he passed away, I took over. I've been been on the farm. This is my this year coming up will be my 48th year farming. I think you must be some of the most dedicated people on <laughs> earth, farmers. And uh, I know I love to eat. That's one of my favorite <laughs> things. So I owe you right, a big uh, right. gratitude. Thank you. Right. Yep. Now, do you have some uh, other um, things that you grow? Like this is a, a seasonal for the end of the end right. of the season. Right. And this you know, gets... We plant also a cover crop when we don't plant corn as a cover crop. I see. Uh, you know, just sorghum, then we just chop it up in the ground. 
you know, for organic material and everything else. Oh, we see. don't we don't like to leave the, the ground bare. Yes. It's just like you at the beach all the time. The sun, what the sun does to you, does the same thing to your ground. Oh. And also, when we plant this cover crop, you don't have as much erosion. Oh, yeah. Because you've got all the roots and the weeds Makes and the grass. Makes perfect sense. Holds everything together. Like having the sea oats at the, right. the beach. That, that's it right. keeps that's things right. right here where you want them. That's right. And uh, then when the season is right yeah, for planting. We'll plow all this up and it'll all be back in a row and all this organic matter will be used like fertilizer. Mm -hmm. You know, so. That's smart. You're replenishing yeah. the earth that you love and that oh, you yeah. use. Yeah. Huh. It's been good to me. We've had some bad years and we've had some good ones. It's a lot of stress. Mm -hmm. A lot of stress. When, just like my potato crop, it's over a million and a half dollars in the ground. Ooh, this is beautiful. Yeah. This is perfect. You can eat this corn when it right before it gets hard. I mean, oh yes, mm -hmm. for humans. Mm -hmm. But you got to catch it from the right day. Mm -hmm. Once it gets hard, you break your teeth. Yes. <laughs> uh, what a nice bouquet. <laughs> Take these with you. Okay, great. You want some more? That's we got bags of it. We bag it up. That's neat. No, I love that. I think uh, it might make a good uh, photograph and, and do a painting of that. Anything you want. Anything. <laughs> <laughs> it was really nice talking to you. Same here. Same yeah. here. For more information about painting and travel with Roger and Sarah Batsimer, visit paintingandtravel.com.